theme for the year, the word of the Lord for us for the year is, can we say it again? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. They, the word upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this has been the theme for the year. And in this particular month of April, we've been looking at mounting up with wings as eagles in the area of our finances, in the area of our wealth. How many of us know that as long as we are in this world, we still need money to operate? We always say this, the gospel is free. Jesus paid for it all, but it takes money. To take it around. Amen. As we are here this morning, the fact that these lights are on, it is an evidence that we are consuming money. So that is the way it is. And so God wants us to, God has made provision and God wants us to know how to operate in, with him such that we can prosper. When you look at the Garden of Eden, God created man and he put him in a garden and provided everything that man will ever need. When you look at our father Abraham, he was the wealthiest in his time. Isaac was so wealthy that one man, a whole nation said, you are too much for us. Jacob was so wealthy. These are our fathers in the faith. Job was a righteous man. The Bible says he was the wealthiest in the East. So, godliness does not mean poverty. However, the Bible tells us that there is a godliness with contentment. And that's why we need to understand how to walk with God in such a way that he can prosper us. That's what we're looking at this uh, this month, uh, we read a scripture. Um, last week that says in Acts chapter twenty verse thirty five that says, um, Jesus said, "It is more blessed to give than to receive." So, we've been talking about the giving aspect this morning. I want to talk briefly about the receiving aspect. So let's quickly go to the book of Philippians. Chapter 4. Verse 15. So we have a panel this morning that will be coming to share with us practically. How do we be, how can we be on that receiving side? He says... Now ye Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning, what's the next word? Giving and receiving. So there is giving, there is also receiving. If all you know is how to give and you don't know how to receive, then after a while, you will not have anything to give. The only thing is that we are emphasizing our motive for giving should not be because of what we are going to receive. We give because, first of all, is our worship. We love God. We want the work of the kingdom of God to go forward. However, in that giving, God also has promised receiving. And I just want us to see this morning some promises of God concerning various receiving. Or what are the elements or what are the things that are involved in receiving? Number one is your faith. Can you say your faith? Our faith on the promises of God is very, very important when it comes to receiving. First of all, let's look at one of the types of giving that God gave to us, tithing and receiving. I mean, tithing. Let's see uh, Malachi chapter 3 verse, from verse 10. Malachi 3 from verse 10. 
Here is God saying, God says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And now God said, that is your responsibility. You do that. And then God immediately is attaching a promise to it. He's not just saying, bring all your tithes and then open your mouth in the air. No. He said, bring all your tithes and then you do your part and then see what I will do. And see what God says he will do. He said, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Next verse. Next verse. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer. You know what the devourer is? Tire bust. Uh, somebody knocks accident. You know, pipe, uh, water pipe bust. Uh, you know, there are so, so many things that, are hap that happen that are not planned for that are wasters, that are devourers. Uncle gets sick. Uh, cousin gets knocked with the veg, all kinds of things. Now, these are things that God said, I will rebuild the devourer for your sakes. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. It's not enough to make money. It's also important that that money be preserved. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. Next verse. Next verse. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. So God promises that when we give our tithes, there are some blessings. So we need to put our faith in these promises and to thank God that when you have given your tithe, God, you said you need to, the Bible says, remind me of my promises. You need to stand on the word of God that God will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on you and rebuild the devourer for your sake. That is a promise of God and we need to claim that promise. Amen. Now, another scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse from verse... Eight. From verse 6, let's quickly see that from verse 6. Second call said, But this I say, he which sweats sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And can you give me the NLT just to make it easy? NLT. He said, Remember this a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously we get a generous crop. So he's using a parallel of a farmer and somebody who is here is talking about giving money. You sow little money, you reap little money. Next verse. So you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Next verse. See, when he has given cheerfully, then what will God do? Say, and God will generously. Can you say God is generous? And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Until you have left over to share with others, you are not yet prosperous. You're not yet enjoying all that God has available. It's not enough that you are able to pay your bills. You should have left over to be able to give to good causes. Next verse. As the scripture says, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Next verse. See this. These are the promises we need to claim. He said, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. And in the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity for you. In fact, in the King James, let's quickly see that verse in King James. Quickly. He said, Now he that ministers seed to the sower 
both minister bread for your food and do what? Multiply. God will multiply. Say, God will multiply my seed sown. I want you to say, God will multiply the seed that I sow. Once more, God will multiply the seed that I sow. That's God's promise. So you need to remind God of his promises. God, you say you will multiply it. I'm expecting the multiplication. Amen. Do you know you can actually do this? Now, you might not be able to do it for every one pound, ten pounds that you give. But when it comes to a time when you give what I call a significant of a significant sowing, you know, uh, something that you know that you have given, you can actually go, write it down. Then when you look at other scriptures, the Bible tells us, it said in, in Mark chapter 10, it says that he will give us a hundredfold. So you can actually, let's say you have given a thousand pounds. You know that's significant for most of us. You say, God, hundred, a thousand pounds. What is the hundredfold of a thousand pounds? Hundred thousand pounds. And you write it. And you start to say, God, I thank you for my harvest. Now, I didn't say, go and say, God, you owe me hundred thousand pounds. That's not what I said. You see, that's the mindset that is not correct. It's not that. It is God that promised. You're not forcing it out of God. He promised to bless. So, you are using your faith to make a demand on the economy, not on God. On the economy to release to you what God has promised. And, you know, the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. Really, when we give and we don't have a vision for the harvest, the enemy can steal the harvest. That's why, especially when you are giving something specific, substantial, you can actually write it down and begin to pray and confess your harvest until you see it. So that's one way. One element of receiving is our faith. You need to exercise your faith concerning receiving. Number two, after you have given and you are exercising your faith, then God begins to direct you. God begins to give you ideas. God begins to give you inspiration. God begins to give you favor. You need to look at all of those things. It is not, it is not that maybe it can happen like that, that maybe you give and somebody comes to give you 100,000 pounds. But most of the time, the way God blesses us and multiplies by is by blessing the work of our hand. Say, the work of my hand. So that's why you need to put your hand in some work. Put your hand in something. I was sharing at the workers' meeting this morning, one of the things you can do as a Christian, when you are giving, God promises to bless you. How do you create channels? We talk about multiple sources of, don't be somebody that just depends on salary. What happens if you lose that job? If you have only one source of income? Let's be creative. God wants us to be creative. When you look at our father Jacob, he was creative. He told the man he was working for, I don't just want a salary. I want things to be done in a way that I can be blessed beyond a salary. So maybe you are working at a job. All you have is a salary. Maybe you are even a housewife. All you have is what your husband gives you. Take part of that money. Go and seek financial education. There are some people that know where you can put 10 pounds, as small as 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 100 pounds, and you invest it every month, you let it grow, you don't have to do anything, somebody else is using that money to work for you, and let your money grow. There is something, there is an advert that Barclays Bank used to have some years ago. They said, the man is very, is, the man is working hard, but his money is very lazy. Say, tell your neighbor, don't yet let your money be lazy. 
What is your money doing for you? If you just put it in the savings account where they give you 0.001% interest, your money is lazy. Or put it under your pillow. It is lazy. It will be depreciating. Find people that have the understanding. You might not. Find the people that have the knowledge. Where can I put this 10 pounds? So that in five years time, at least it will have become 50 pounds. There are people that have that knowledge, even in our midst. Or maybe check them, but find out. So that's one way. Put your money, put a little bit in something that can grow for you. Another way we encourage us, especially in this country, buy your own property. Tell your neighbor, buy your own property. You see, this is the where the blessings of God comes. Sometimes we think it's so difficult. It's a mountain. That's what they would. But you see, when the grace and the favor of God is upon you, God will make it easy for you. I remember, you know, one of our, even, even us parents, once your children graduate, you know, we keep telling, all this, uh, thank God for going on holidays, going on cruises, is good. But let them put money aside to be able to buy their property. I remember there's one of these, you know, young people that one of our pastors worked with, and, you know, he was in crew, and they were just discussing, and, what are you doing? He said, oh, I don't have deposit. So you don't have deposit. Okay, how much do you have? And through wisdom, this, because he works in the area of properties, there are people that have knowledge and can show you what to do. He helped him, and this boy, he, he's still a single, not yet married, but you know, this pastor helped him, got his first property from 10,000 deposit, he bought the first property, of course, he's still a single person. He was living in one room, renting out two other rooms. And from there, he got some other money and he bought a second property. It's the way we think. Don't limit yourself. God is able to open doors for you. Let's ask, seek for knowledge. Seek for, you know, people that have information. There are a lot of information there that can make it easy for you. And because of the favor of God, God will also make it easy for you. God wants his children to prosper. But these are the ways he's going to prosper. He's going to prosper. When you buy a property, and there are sometimes properties depreciate. There are sometimes, but you know, on the long run, at least in this country, on the long run, by the time you've owned a property for 10 years, for 15 years, it can never be the same value that you bought it for. And you are living in it. And it's increasing for you. So your money is working for you. So please, this is the purpose of the... A church is a place where we learn not just spiritual things, but even wisdom. There are things that people will give to you free here. Information direction that if you go to the professional you have to pay for it but because we are brethren they will share with you freely and we can take advantage of it there are business opportunities there are things we can do and it is these things that we put our hands on that god will now bless and you just find that you are prospering amen god wants us to prosper we shall all prosper in Jesus name. Let's bow our heads to pray. Father, we are so grateful to you. Thank you Lord that is your will that will prosper.